Hi, everyone. Welcome to another edition of Fast Facts, where we're today we're talking about everything about direct variation equations. So we're going to go through three rounds. The first round is going to be, is it a direct variation? Yes or no. Then we're going to talk about figuring out the direct variation from a table and then figuring out what the direct variation is from a graph. And these are going to be generally pretty quick, guys, so make sure you are totally ready to go. And then you are going to be direct variation experts. All right, let's take a look. So you are going to have a five second timer on the screen. I know that seems pretty quick, but and you may be stuck on a, for a couple of the first few before you get to the hang of it. But these are going to be very, very quick questions. So round one is about determining just yes, is it a direct variation or no, is it not a direct variation? And remember, the form for a direct variation is y equals kx. So are you ready? We're going to have four problems. Here's the first problem. Is that a direct variation? The answer is yes. It's certainly in the form of y equals kx. My k is negative 3. Next one. Hopefully we realize right away that is definitely not a direct variation, and it's that minus 4 at the end that's just not part of the form. Good. This one definitely is. The k value here is 2 thirds. k can totally be a fraction. It could be a decimal. It could be an integer. It can pretty much be anything. So this is definitely a direct variation. Last one. Now, this one certainly is not a direct variation. It's actually an inverse variation that you're going to learn later in the school year. And this one here, x, y equals 6. Um, if I was to divide both sides by x, I'd get y equals 6 over x, which is definitely not in the form of y equals kx because the k and the x have to multiply. So that's going to be a big implication that it's not a direct variation. Okay, round two is going to be figuring out the direct variation from a table. So we're going to basically just figure out from a table, is it a direct variation or not? Now, a couple of key things to remember. Every direct variation goes for the origin. And... Um, we should be able to see that the x values are increasing at a constant rate and the y values are increasing at a constant rate. Okay, so we have to make sure it's linear, that we have, you know, constant values that are increasing or decreasing, and it definitely goes through the origin. Now, if you don't see the origin in the table, you may have to, you know, in, interpolate or extrapolate the information by maybe figuring out within the table would 0, 0 exist or outside of the table would 0, 0 exist. We've got four problems here. Okay. Is this a direct variation? Now you might be like, hey, that was way too quick, but here's the kicker. When x is 0, y should be 0. So if you see x negative 10, that's going to be the big kicker to you. It's not a direct variation because it should be 0, 0. Let's look at the next one. I think this one was probably then a dead giveaway because you see 0, 0. Also make sure the x values are increasing by 1s, which they are. Y values are increasing by three, so it's definitely linear and it goes to the origin, so it is yes. Now, this one you don't see zero, zero, but think about it. If the next X value here, negative four, negative three, negative two, negative zero, negative one, the next value would be zero. And if I continue this trend going down, four, down, four, down, four, down, four, I have zero. So zero, zero is part of this table. If I extend the table, so the answer is yes. Use that same idea for this next one. Now for this one, zero, zero is not outside of the table. It would actually be within these values here. Now look, zero on my X would be here, but I definitely would not be matching up with zero here. I'd be going in between seven and eight which is 7.5, definitely not the origin, so the answer is no. Round three, figuring out the direct variation from the graph. So really all we're doing is figuring out, hey, does it go through the origin? It is a direct variation, and if it doesn't go through the origin, then it's not. Okay. 
Now, this one most certainly is the direct variation. It does go through the origin. And the slope of this equation or the constant of variation is three over two, because from the origin, it's going up three to the right two. So for the next three, if it is a direct variation, we're gonna also write the equation. So you're determining, is this the direct variation? And I think we clearly see it's not. And the giveaway, the main key is it doesn't go through the origin. That's it. But this one does go through the origin. So let's write that equation. And I never want us to feel like stressed out about writing the equation. Just notice if it goes through the origin, all you're finding is the slope. I'm going down four, one, two, three, four to the right one. So my slope is simply negative four. So it's y equals negative four x. Last problem. Definitely a direct variation. So we should be able to write this equation. We hopefully see that we have a slope of one because it's going up one to the right one, up one to the right one. And my slope is just simply y equals x. Thank you so much for watching. I hope it helps. Bye.